Um, this is just a test. There is not an astronaut on board, but the idea is that fut in the future, they'll be able to carry astronauts. But there is something, someone on board named Riley? <laughs> Well, that's correct. There's a, a, a mannequin on board. Uh, you can think of it as a, uh, a robot or an astronaut test dummy, if you will, uh, wearing a spacesuit and all of that. It's instrumented. It has sensors all over it so they can measure the environment inside the capsule that the astronauts will experience when they blast off uh, later this summer. So that's, that's all data they think they understand, but the test dummy, which is nicknamed Ripley, uh, should be able to pin all that down for them. So and, we, and while we're talking, I just want to point out yeah, the please. main parachutes have just come out. That's a major step. Yeah, can, we can hear the applause. And everything, be, everything seems to be going flawlessly. Oh, yeah. That is the SpaceX control room in Hawthorne, California, out in Los Angeles, or near there. That's really cool, the Those way four they, picks, uh, the you can, parachutes you can, deployed. Absolutely. And if you look at the spacecraft, you can see how it's kind of charred. After that high-speed yeah. hypersonic entry into the Earth's atmosphere, really gets toasty coming down from atmospheric friction, uh, over 2,000 degrees on the heat shield. And, of course, it looks it. It's got that, uh, that space flight look to it now. So what makes this really significant, if this works out, is that it would give NASA an opportunity to use an American-made, an American company to get its astronauts into space. Because right now, Bill, we have to rely on a Russian company, right? The Soyuz capsules, which means that NASA has to fork over a lot of money to pay for a seat on that ride. Yeah, the current contract calls for about $80 million a seat to ride on the Russian Soyuz. And you're right, you know, since the shuttle stopped flying back in 2011, uh, NASA has not had its own way to get astronauts to and from the station, so they've had to hitch rides with the Russians. And that's worked out well. I mean, it's a good partnership, but clearly everybody on this side of the ocean wants to restore that lost capability and uh, rather spend that money in the States, obviously, than overseas and launch our own astronauts aboard U.S. spacecraft from U.S. soil. So, you know, Bill, earlier today I was talking with uh, one of our, uh, one of the cameramen who works on the 4AM, and we were trying to figure out sort of the, what's the difference between the Soyuz capsule and this crew, uh, crew dragon, the dimensions and, and that sort of thing. Can you give us an idea of just, you know, whether it's a more comfortable ride than the Soyuz? Well, uh, it's hard to say. You know, in the Soyuz, that, that spacecraft was designed back in the late 60s and early 70s. It's been upgraded over the years. But it's still basically the same spacecraft. It's very, very cramped. Uh, it can carry three crew members and about a couple hundred kilograms of cargo. Not very much at all. But it's extremely reliable. Uh, they've been launching this thing for years. Uh, they haven't had a, a, a major mishap with it in decades. And so it's, it's a very, very tight capsule. This one can carry up to seven people at a time. So definitely a a larger interior volume. Of course, it's got state-of-the-art computers in it, all sorts of safety systems that uh, weren't available uh, when they designed the Soyuz. So I think that uh, it should be just as safe and just as reliable. But of course, you've got to fly it to make sure. And I was just listening to NASA in my ear. We're very close to the ocean, so the splashdown appears to be imminent. Doesn't this look so cool? Yeah, it's very It, it is. reminds it me is. of jellyfish. There you go. Look at there. Right on the money, 8.45 a.m., which is exactly what they predicted. Nice. Pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So, uh, Bill, give us a see the recovery crews yeah. heading out toward it right now? Yeah, what happens now? I mean, if there really were astronauts in there, does the capsule, does it float? How do the astronauts get out? Oh, it absolutely floats. And, uh, you know, they wouldn't want to land it in a rough sea or the astronauts might get seasick. Uh, but they're going to stand by in their spacecraft if they were in there. Uh, the recovery ship is nearby. They would go get the spacecraft, haul it ashore, I mean, haul it on board the ship. And then, of course, the astronauts can then be flown back to shore aboard a helicopter.